How do you know the summer is really and truly over? My dad says it's over precisely one second after midnight on September 21st. My friend Ellen says it's over the moment you start thinking about whether to buy a three-ring binder or a spiral notebook for school. But for me, the way I know the summer is a goner is when my brother Pete and Artie, the strongest man in the world, go to the beach and try to beat up the ocean. They're not crazy, just angry. Angry that the summer has to end. I know exactly how they feel. Every year it seems like the summer is over about 10 seconds after it started. Especially this summer. I'm Pete, and this is my brother Pete. And this is all that's left of our summer vacation. 653 photos developed for free at the Quick Pick photo booth where my friend Ellen worked all summer. Where should I start? I know, check this out. It's Pete and his best friend Mort Mortensen, greasing the turf on blocks of ice. Mort shaves off all his body hair to cut down on wind resistance, but Pete still beats him every year. Eat my turf, Chrome Dome! <laughs> it's one of the surefire signs that summer has begun. Can't feel my butt. There are other signs, too. Your shadow gets shorter. Electricity gets louder. Killer bees arrive from the Yucatan Peninsula. Bees. And of course, the annual border dispute. I'm taking over your turf, Tubby! You'll have to kill me first. <laughs> between my dad and Mrs. Blotar gets underway. Still, the summer isn't officially summer until Mr. Tasty comes to town. No one knows who he is or where he comes from. But when that first really hot day in June rolls around, you just know the Tasty Mobile's coming to the rescue. Hey, kiddos. Hey. It's not like he remembers your name, but once, when my brother Pete was broke and dying for a blue tornado bar, he offered Mr. Tasty a huge and evil insect for trade. Hmm. He doesn't sing, does he? He's flesh. I'll take it. That's just the kind of guy he was. The other thing I should tell you about Mr. Tasty is that no one knows his true identity. Who is he? Some people think he escaped from the state mental hospital at Durango Falls, while others are pretty sure... He's that guy! I forget his name, but he used to be married to Cher. Ms. Vanderveer, this blind millionaire who lives on our block, she just calls him Leonard. You never understood me, Leonard. You never really understood me. About the only thing anybody agrees on is that the summer just wouldn't be summer without him. Let me tell you the whole story. It all started here, at the Quick Pick booth, where Ellen worked part-time for her Uncle Lou. Thank you, and have a quick pick terrific day! What a job. It was hot, you had to wear this pukey polyester, plus there was nowhere to go to the bathroom. You just had to hold it in. Outside of licking dirt for a living, it was easily the world's deadliest job. Then, one day, she stumbled across a clue. A clue that could unravel the summer's greatest mystery.
Right in this envelope is our one chance to find out Mr. Tacey's true identity. Open it before somebody comes. They can't. Come on. It's totally against the rules. Rules bite. Pete, don't. It was like opening the sacred tomb of King Tut as Pete peeled back the flap and revealed the secret life of Mr. Tasty. Wow! All in all, they were pretty ordinary photos, except for one thing. He never took off his swirly head. He's got to take it off. No. Not here. Hey, the Statue of Liberty. Look at this one. It sure looks lonely, doesn't he? Yeah, it's weird. But how could he not have any friends? Probably foot odor? Maybe he doesn't have any friends. I don't know. Maybe he does. Who? Us. We really didn't know what to do. I call this one the shimmy shimmy shake. Mm -hmm. And we really didn't know what to say. So, uh, how fast does this baby go? But we tried our best to somehow make friends with the mysterious man behind the plastic mask. So, do you have a girlfriend? <laughs> sure, I got 49 of them. Let's see. There's the boomerang bar, the hydrogen pop, meringue kabang, blue tornado bar, mm, chocolate thunder chunks, lemon licky nubs, orange splurto sticks. Finally, on one fateful Thursday... Mr. Tasty? Yes? We were kind of, kind of wondering... Uh -huh. what, um... Would you like to go trout fishing with us tomorrow? I'm bringing the dynamite. Thanks, kiddos, but that's my day to hot wax the tasty mobile. Can we help? Well, it's kind of a <laughs> one-man job. Maybe next time. Mr. Tasty? Uh-huh. Do you have any friends? Well, sure. All kids are my friends. <laughs> yeah, okay. But don't you feel, like, kind of lonely sometimes? An ice cream man lonely? Come on. Yeah, like, maybe you feel like nobody really knows you or even cares. Hey, everybody knows me. I'm, um, Mr. Tasty. <laughs> now, uh, <clears throat> what can I do for you kiddos? Let us be your friends. I know. How about a bodacious blue tornado bar to tickle your tonsils? Buffo! No, that's not enough anymore. I, I'm sorry. I, I wish it could be different, but uh, it's for your own good. Take them. They're starting to melt. Please, they're all you really need. They're just popsicles. Exactly. And I'm just an ice cream man, and you're just my customers, and that's the way it has to be. How can you say that? There's no other way. Just give us a chance. I, I can't. Not here. It's, it's the best I can do. Goodbye, kiddos. When he didn't come back the next day, nobody got too worried. He's probably just hot waxing his head. But when the heat wave hit Sunday and still no tasty, the great blue tornado bar panic was officially underway. Out on the street, you'd see all kinds of kids going through Blue Tornado Bar withdrawal. Tasty! Tasty? I'll have two Blue Tornado Bars and a meringue of egg for my sister Lucy. While some of us started hallucinating, other people just lost their mind. I didn't mean it, Leonard. Leonard, you were good to me. The summer had turned to crud. About all we ever did was sit around spreading tasty rumors. I heard his truck crashed. I heard his head melted. I heard he remarried Cher. Other than that, we just stare for hours at the hypnotic swaying motion of Mrs. Blotard's colossal arm flub. Look at that flub go. It's a flesh avalanche. And we probably would have kept on staring, but then our personal superhero... Bertie, the strongest man in the world! ...came along and accidentally saved the day. Here's how it happened. In his superhuman struggle to destroy the killer bee's diabolical hive, 
Hardy decided to take on the Queen Bee herself in a winner-take-all staring contest. She was a wily bee, all right, but Hardy was even wilier. And finally, he had the murderous queen just where he wanted her. J.R.B. prayers, my puny hybrid foe. As he zeroed in for the kill. Ah, uh, blink! Blink, I say, you stinky bee! His powerful arty vision caught sight of something off on the horizon. Gurk! Gurk! It can't be! photo gal Artie a shot a flash of white near the curve of the earth then it was gone so what Artie the tasty mobiles <laughs> taking into consideration the height of the water tower the rotation of the earth and the prescription of Artie's eyeglasses Ellen made some trigonomic calculations and pinpointed Mr. Tasty's coordinates to a stretch of interstate in northern Kentucky. We have to find him. The search for Mr. Tasty had begun. After Artie's miraculous sighting of the Tasty Mobile, he sprang into action. The summer was half over, and out there, somewhere, the loneliest man in the world was driving further and further away from the only friends he had, us. If we didn't find him, nobody would. Ellen turned her booth into a command center, took over every ship, and devoted her life to tracking him as he burned across the continent. She knew she was violating about 1,700 quick pick regulations, but the only way to find Tasty was by looking for clues in every single photograph that came in. When a clue would turn up, she'd plant another pushpin in her map and try to predict his next cunning move. Tacoma, of course! Then she'd contact the local police and have them put up all kinds of flyers and stuff she made herself. My job was to handle the phones in case anyone called, while Pete did his part by keeping a lookout at the Splankton Municipal Pool. Everything was going smoothly until that fateful day when lifeguard Den Cleary tried to take Pete on. The thing you have to understand about Pete and Den Cleary is that they've been feuding for years. Last year, after Den Cleary caught Pete eating in the pool, he banned him from the water for the whole summer. This summer, Pete was taking no prisoners. His plan seemed innocent enough at first. The day Den Cleary made Pete jump, he jumped 43 more times. The next day, 79 times then 104 times. Pete knew it might take a while, but all that jumping day after day, well, it began to get to Den Cleary. He tried to outmaneuver Pete me. by calling countless adult Adults swims. Only kids out. Get going. Get down. Adults only. But when the constantly plunging Pete got up to 269 jumps one day, Den Cleary finally snapped. <laughs> oh, talk to him, please. He'll listen to you. I can't take it anymore. Please just make him stop. <laughs> See what I can do. <laughs> Pete, come here. The situation calls for a plan, uh, plan F. Let's go! With Dan Cleary out of the picture, Pete was free to continue his lookout vigil. The new lifeguard didn't seem to mind. How's the weather up there, my little Viking? Sweet! Meanwhile, back at the command center, 
Ellen was getting increasingly frustrated. The summer was fading fast, and she still was one step behind the elusive Mr. Tasty. So Our only hope was to try and talk to someone who knew Tasty. Somebody like Ms. Like Vandeveer. It's worth a try. Leonard said my eyes were bluer than the bluest blue tornado bar. He did. He said that. When that plan didn't work, I took my search to Cloghaven Beach. It isn't the best beach in the world, but Dad keeps coming back every year, hoping he'll find buried treasure with his trusty metal detector. Why Cloghaven? Because his dad has told us about a million times. This is where I found your mom. There I was, 22 years old, fresh out of the army, broke, out of my mind, looking for treasure. And then all of a sudden, the detector starts beeping like a banshee. You know, and I'm thinking Spanish to blooms, right? <laughs> and then suddenly I'm shocked to see your mother's beautiful face blinking beneath me. And I'm thinking, what the Sam Hill? Oh, when your mother says, uh, uh, go ahead, honey, say it. Uh, it's me. I have a metal plate in my head. <laughs> Can you believe that? A metal plate from some accident she had when she was a kid. Eh, we get to talking. And next thing you know, uh, honey, next thing you know? The wedding bells are ringing. Ugh. Will you turn that thing off now? Uh, sure. Oh, sorry. Did I ever tell you guys that story before? Huh? Oh. Before we launched into the story of their wild honeymoon at the Hoover Dam, I veered toward the boardwalk hoping I'd find an ice cream man with some answers about Mr. Tasty. What can I get you, son? How about a sludge sickle? You seem like a bona fide sludge sickle man. You don't have any blue tornado bars, do you? Nope. No, I don't. You'll have to talk to Mr. Tasty if it's a blue tornado you're after. Do you know where I can find him? Nope. Heard he got run out of town by a bunch of nosy kids. I heard they just wanted to be his friends. So that's what happened. What do you mean? Tasty knows the rules. Why do you think he wears that plastic head all the time? To keep kids like you from asking too many personal questions. Why? What are you guys so afraid of? Look, aren't we here on the first hot day of every summer? Aren't we? Don't we carry 49 different flavorific flavors, including pineapple blurt? What else do you want from us? I don't know anymore. Well, how about that sludge sickle? Like I said, you look like a bona fide sludge sickle man. I had come hoping for a miracle. Instead, all I got was a cruddy sludge sickle and a sinking feeling that Mr. Tasty was gone for good. Delta 88, or maybe a, a, a Cutlass Supreme! <laughs> oh. 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 We all pitched in, and within the hour, we were the proud owners of a 1978 Cutlass Supreme. Hey, buckle up. Let's go. Ran perfectly and had tons of leg room. I got a new car. I didn't have Our to go dad run. was so happy, he sang all the way home. It's got a radio, windows, headlights. As much as I enjoyed dad's beautiful voice, I knew Ellen was finishing her second shift. So I had dad drop me off at the mall. So how'd it go at the beach? Dad found a car, Cutlass Supreme. Did you find anybody who knows Tasty? Yeah, this guy, Captain Scrummy. What'd he say? He said I looked like a bona fide sludgesicle man. Mr. Tasty's never coming back, is he? No, I don't think so. Let's go, I'll walk you home. There was nothing left to do. He probably had found himself a new town where nobody knew how lonely he was. 
Our search for Mr. Tasty had come to a close. Pete refused to give up his post at first. But one chilly night in early September... See you, Tasty. He left the board for good. Occasionally, I would walk by the Tasty farm. But all I expected to find was maybe some loose change. It was hopeless. The signs that the summer was ending were all around us. Back to Yucatan with you, Stinky. We will battle next year. Whew. Finally, late one afternoon, there was nothing left to do but close the command center once and for all. Sorry, we're closed. Could you please? <gasps> Mr. Tasty! Hey, kiddos! Mr. Tasty, you're back! Where were you? Where? I think you know where I was. Ellen, right? I saw this on a telephone pole outside Biloxi. And this one near Duluth. Seems everywhere I went. <laughs> there I was. Why did you come back? Oh, I had to. I wanted to uh, pick up my photographs. Oh, yeah, they're right here. I guess you know we looked at them. I kind of figured you did. How'd they turn out? Oh, hey, you ever been to the Statue of Liberty? You should go. I pretended a blue tornado bar was the torch. I wish it was. Me too. We missed you, Mr. Tasty. Please, don't say that. But why is it so terrible? Because every year on this day, the summer ends, and I always have to say goodbye. It's hard enough without having you kiddos missing me. Then don't go. I have to, Pete. I'm an ice cream man. I am what the summer is. Fireflies, thunderstorms, butt sweat on the car seat. And when it all goes, I have to go with it. Couldn't you just stay a little bit longer? Well, I'll tell you what. There's a little daylight left. What do you say you kiddos help me wax the tasty mobile? Didn't you say that was a one-man job? Not anymore. I guess we thought if we just kept waxing and waxing, maybe Mr. Tasty would never leave. But when the sun finally set, it was time for him to go. Okay, kiddos, come on, I got a long drive ahead of me. Now, don't worry, I'll be back. First hot day, like always. Um, till then, I was wondering... Yeah? Um, could I get a shot of all of us together? It would mean a lot to me. Sure. Great. No one knows who he is or where he comes from, and probably no one ever will. I guess some things are supposed to stay a mystery. All we know is that he's more than just an ice cream man. We're more than just his customers. When it comes to people missing you, it's really not that terrible at all. <laughs>